You all are the blessedness of the Father, and I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen and amen. I trust you have had a wonderful week so far. Yes, you are the blessedness of the Father, and I love you all so very much. <laughs> right. So I just wanted to bring this word because uh, there are some of you, um, and it seems like you've been going through cycle of warfare. It's like a, a warfare, basically. And you're trying to figure out where all of this is coming from. You're not fighting, you know, it's not powers or principalities. It's not powers of darkness. It's not, you know, evil at work or anything. But the truth of it is, some of you have been fighting accusations. Yes, you realize that people are just accusing you for some things, you know, maybe perhaps some things that you didn't do, but they raised up accusations against you. I'm going to use this in the context of our Lord and our Savior, King Jesus. Remember when he was before Pontius Pilate and Herod, before he got there, they were accusing him of so many things. And in the dimension of Apostle Paul too, they were accusing him of so many things. But the Bible says that their words were not agreeing with one another. Even Pilate, by the time he basically interviewed Jesus, he realized that they were only accusing him because of their jealousy. Can you see? Because all the charges they brought against him was because of jealousy and envy. So it's about your case at the same time in this hour. You know, uh, it's a place where majority of you, you know, uh, you've been going through this dimension. Yeah, you've been going through accusations after accusations. That's that's what it is. And it feels like it would not stop continuously. It kept going, it kept going, it kept going. And it's like as soon as you finish dealing with one accusation, another comes up. Let me give you an example. You know, like I said, with Jesus, right? It was because of jealousy, not envy, but jealousy. So now you can begin to understand, perhaps you work, let's say in a company and you work in the finance department. Now, the person who basically is heading the finance department has been what? Has been <laughs> basically stealing from the what? From the, from the company. But you are the one who is in charge of the books. <laughs> but the person who is in charge of the office has been what? Transferring funds. But then it came, it came to balance the books and they are wondering, how is this money going missing? So because he has authority, <laughs> they decided to blame you <laughs> because, you know, you, you're the very perhaps least in the place of work. And they looked at you and they decided to make you what? An example of what is happening. Can you see? They accused you of what you know nothing about. The truth is, because they refuse to take what responsibility of their actions, it just pays off to accuse you of things. So now I want us to look at it from this dimension, right? The Bible tells us that there remains no accusing voice, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, in the what? In the Passion Translation. Now the case is closed. And in Revelation chapter 12, it says the accuser of the brethren. So you can see there is a dimension of this accusation. Some you know nothing about. Some you do know something about. The Bible also tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says a curseless curse will not what? Will not land. So a curse that has no reason to land is not going to land. Can I share a simple truth with you? The truth of it is <laughs> the people who are basically accusing you, they are the ones who have done you wrong. But because can I explain this in, in context? Because we need to understand this in principle. So they accuse you. Majority of them, perhaps they're working in wickedness or in witchcraft. That's what they're doing. So because they're working in this dimension, they have probably taken your case probably to a witch doctor or to a sorcerer or to a dimension of evil, you know, reading incantations and things like that. And now they have realized that what you did was actually, <laughs> you know, what they claimed that you did was false. Can you see? They've been, they've been accusing you, not finding out what exactly happened. They only took the case and they ran with it. Can you see that? They took the case and they ran with it. This is what gossip is all about. Not finding out the truth, but taking, you know, what that person said, what that person, ah, you know, you, you mean that brother? You mean he did that to that other brother? Wow. Then they begin to work all manners of evil without finding out the truth. So for some people, they took your case <laughs> before an evil altar, or they took your case before people and then began to accuse you concerning it. What eventually then happened? Yes, this is what happened. Now, without finding out the truth, they went and done evil with that accusation. 
So every time they are basically releasing things against you, that accusation keeps bouncing back because the accusation they are releasing, they are releasing it with demons. <laughs> Can you see? And because it has nowhere to land, because you're not guilty, it's falling back on them. So you can see, now the reason why they won't stop accusing is because they don't want to bear the consequences of what they released against you. So that is why they have to keep trying. <laughs> Do you see? That's why they have to keep trying, to try to keep looking for faults again and again and again. So it's a place where every time you silence an accusation, they, grin, they raise another one. You silence an accusation, they raise another one. You silence an accusation, they raise another one. Why? Because the original accusation they raised against you has no effect on you because you are not guilty. Can you see what happened to King Jesus? That's exactly what happened to him as well. You see with Apostle Paul, <laughs> when they came against him and releasing accusations, their words were not agreeing. So whatever it is that they've done, they are not agreeing with one another. No, for the accusations is not in agreement. Why? Because you are not guilty of what they're accusing you of. And the reason why they don't want to own up is because majority of them, they don't want to come out and say, I did it. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? Because of pride. Because, you know, for whatever reason, pride, arrogance, ego, whatever reason it is, they don't want to. And some of them, they use their position to what? To come against you. That's what they're doing. So because they would not own up to what they've done is the reason why some of them cannot come back to tell you, I am sorry. So you can see that. That's why some of them cannot come back to tell you, I am sorry, because of whatever dimension they're working in. So they rather continue in the manner of what? Their wickedness. Now, I want to give you an example so can, you can understand it clearly. You can basically read it if you're opportune to. There is a dimension in the United Kingdom of what happened recently with the previous Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. So it was a place where, you know, with all the COVID law that happened, and when people came out of that, you know, he was trying to cover his tracks. But there was a woman, you know, named Don Butler. And she was there and she was basically telling Boris Johnson, hey, you're lying. Because when you told everybody to go on lockdown, you were having parties. <laughs> Can you see that? So it was one rule for the government, one rule for the people. So this woman stood up and began to say, hey, you know, Boris Johnson, you're lying because you had a party. And Boris kept saying, nope, I did not have a party. There was no party. And he was there. He was making fun of people. He was there jeering because of what? He was the prime minister. So they used the parliamentary powers. They used it to shut this woman down and send her out of the commons. Can you see that? But eventually what happened? So what they tried to hide in the corner in that chamber eventually became a national what? Disgrace. Can you see it? So they were trying to correct him in a silent place. But rather than own up, he refused to. So he was made, you know, in public. <laughs> it was turned foolishness. So it basically, what the woman said became true and all his accusations became what? Foolishness. That's exactly how I'm going to put it. So you can eventually see that this woman that they embarrassed in the secret place. Now, the person who did it was embarrassed publicly. <laughs> this is the dimension of what majority of you are about to experience. For what they did to you privately, the Lord is about to give you a public vindication. Yes, it's about to be a public vindication because with this woman, nobody knew, you know, it was, you know, it was like a hush hush. They probably put it on one, one tiny page on the website that this is what she did. This is what she said. They tried to hush her up. But look at what eventually happened to Prime Minister Boris, that what he was being accused of quietly was eventually what brought his downfall in the open arena. So you can see, this is why I said to you that majority of you, that they have been what? The Lord has been warning those people, but they have refused. But now the Lord is about to give you a public vindication because he said that what? You know, they did it with to you in private. Do you see what they did to Daniel? They went to meet the king privately. They put Daniel... <laughs> <laughs> they put Daniel privately. You see him? But eventually what happened? It was a public show of what they made, of what? The people who came against Daniel. So you can see, for all the accusations they came at you with, the Lord is about to give you a public vindication. Isaiah chapter 49, I believe there about, says, the kings shall see you released. Yes, they shall see you released. So that means for what they did to you 
pub privately, you're about to see the public vindication because they thought that they can do away with you quietly. That is why majority of you, you know, they've been coming after your life again and again. They want to silence you very quietly so that they won't know, ex so that people won't know what they did to you. <laughs> so you see with Don Butler, yes, that's exactly what happened. Trying to hush her quietly, but give her a public vindication. So I want to read this scripture. So it's not a place here I'm reversing or anything. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was a God and the word is God. It is the word that goes forth. The Bible says that what? <laughs> it was the word that made the servant of the, the centurion healed, right? So it is this word that will eventually bring it to pass. That is why the Lord said to Ezekiel, hey, you prophesy and he prophesied the word and eventually all the bones came together. So this is the dimension of the word in the book of Psalm and chapter 50. And this is what it says. If you read Psalm 50 verse 1 all the way to uh, verse 13, it, uh, verse 15, it tells you about the deliverance. And then you can see, it says here, I believe in, uh, uh, you know, in verse 4 of Psalm 50, it says, He summons the heavens above and earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness for he is a God of what? Justice. So you can begin to see because of what happened, this is the deliverance the Lord is basically bringing to those who are wicked. He says, what rights have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. When you see a thief, you join with him. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son. When you did these things, I kept silent. You thought I was exactly like you, but I now arrange you and set my accusations before you. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you. Those who sacrifice thank, thank offerings, honor me, and to the blameless, I will show my salvation. So you can begin to see, this is what the Lord is saying. He's going to begin to testify. Can you see? So this is where you're going to begin to see the Lord because they hate his instructions and they cast his words behind him because they say, hey, you know, that, that's not the word of the Lord. That, that God can't do that. God can't do that. Now you can see what the Lord is saying. He says, now, because for a while I have kept silent, but he says, now I arraign you. So this is where the Lord is gathering them. And the same accusation that they've tried to run away with and they run to run away from and where they will not acknowledge their fault this is the hour that is reversing every accusation that they released against you is reversing it back to them it says not by power nor by might but by the spirit so for all that they refuse to take responsibility for it says for what is going to happen at this point in time there is no way they're going to get out of it no not at all remember boris johnson tried so many times to get out of it but he couldn't he was eventually brought down and this is the dimension that you're going to see in the lives of these people that because they would they would not be able to get out of it accusations after accusations after accusations after accusations after accusations they are not going to be able to get out of it so they thought it was it was just you you thought you were the only one but you're not the only one they're doing it too they're doing it to all other people at the same time so this is where all those accusations that they released against others Others. So think about one person releasing about 100 or 200 accusations against different people. Now those accusations have come up and now been reversed onto them. Can you see that dimension? So this is where the Lord is helping them to understand. Consider this or I will tear you to pieces. So that ac accusation is eventually what is going to bring them to their end. That accusation is what is going to eventually bring them to the end. So think about it. You did something wrong. You acknowledged it. You repented of it. They did something wrong, but they refused to acknowledge what they did wrong, but continue to accuse you for what you did wrong. <laughs> Do you see that injustice? And this is the justice the Lord is bringing. Can you see? <laughs> this is the justice that the Lord is bringing in this hour. Because your time has come. So this is where he's silencing 
every accusation against you. So for every accusation, he says, there remains no accusing voice. Can you see? There remains no accusing voice because he's bringing all of it to an end. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Today is the day of your freedom. Today is the day of your liberty. This is where you're going to begin to see the reversal of that begin to manifest in your life to see the glory of the Lord manifest in every dimension of what he has what ordained for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I bless each and every one of you. You are the blessedness of the Father. I give God the glory for you. Have a wonderful and a glorious day in the presence of the Most High. Blessings.